Jack might. Hi, and welcome. Uh, today we are going to be t taking off the carrier and removing the half shaft on a Jaguar IRS. And these are the tools you're going to need. You are going to need a ratchet. This is my favorite. Take your pick, doesn't really matter what size. 11 16 socket to remove the half shaft nuts. This is the lower fulcrum or the outer fulcrum nut, which takes 11 16 or I'm sorry, 15 16 um, The castle nut that'll, that is, uh, <clears throat> holds the drive, uh, the half shaft onto the carrier. You're going to need an inch and a half socket. You're going to need a pair of pliers to remove the cotter pin, a ratchet. This is <clears throat> a wheel, uh, well, it's a, it's a, it's a puller. <laughs> anyway, it's going <clears> to <throat> pull that, it's going to remove the uh, carrier from the half shaft. Um, you're going to need a hammer. This is a 15 six. I'm sorry, a 5 8 6 inch long piece of steel that you're going to use to pound out the carrier uh, <clears throat> bolt that runs, that holds the carrier onto the half shaft. Um, I found that an impact driver works nicely, um, and this isn't going to be enough to remove this castle nut or to break it loose, but it does work fine for. <clears throat> the half shaft nuts, those over there. So, anyway, um, this is what we're, what I'm talking about. Let's just take a stroll. Yes, I do vacuum. And welcome to my mess. Here's my XJS. That's my XJR. It's kind of dirty. Actually, it's way dirty. That's my daily driver, my 85 XJ6. And this is an IRS. And we are going to be removing this. Here's the castle nut. There's the cotter pin. This is the fulcrum. Carrier. Carrier nut. Half shafts. Half shaft nuts. Rear brake, brake disc. So, um, in the ne in this video and the following video, we'll be taking all of this apart. I've already got one side done and all cleaned up and ready to put back together. So, anyway, we can kind of talk about that stuff. So, let's get started. All right. Well, let's get this off. Here's another tool that I didn't mention that you might need was a pair of vice grips and a hammer. Nothing like using tools the way they're not intended. All right, all right. We've got our piece of wood in place. It will hold the half shaft from spinning. And now we're going to take this castle nut off. And forward. Now we want to go reverse.
was really stuck on there. Okay, now we're going to take these carrier nuts off. I'm replacing both these nuts, so I am going to take them both off, even though if you're not replacing them, the book says only take one side off for whatever that's worth. All right, so let's get started. Okay, this is a 15 16 socket. I tell you, an impact makes this job a whole lot easier. So, if you have one, if you've got a you know, a powerful electric one, which I don't, then, you know, that would probably work. There. Of course, it's spinning on the other side. Uh, all right. Using the lug nuts to um, hold this in place. Okay, when you use these things, you kind of want to because it's 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 all wobbly and shit. So if you just kind of tighten it up, it's this isn't going to line up with that. So you just kind of have to it into place and then and hold it. And when you do this you just kind of have to work each one around. Just, you know, just to make sure that you get it all the pressure all even and the thing stays in line. Because the last thing you want to do is bugger up the end of, of the input shaft because then you're fucked. I mean you can still get them but they're insanely expensive. And me being the cheapskate that I am, well, I'm actually not cheap. I just don't have a whole lot of money. Alright, so this is on here tight, reasonably tight. Now we turn this and this will pull this whole thing off. Alright, sorry, pardon my reach, I need to get the socket. Now I don't like to use air tools with this because I, I like to feel it. You know, it's kind of a one-on-one -on -one thing. And we are spinning. So we're gonna have to use our chock of wood to kind of hold shit in place because we're spinning around. So just kind of wedge that in there to keep it from spinning. Now this might not come off easy because in the directions of putting the thing back together they say to use Loctite to uh, secure it. Me, I'm not a big fan of that idea. Alright, so we are, I think we are loose. Yep, we are. So. I'm going to pull this bolt out while I still can. Yeah, so I'm pulling the fulcrum shaft out because this is going to pull out away from, from here. And it's a whole lot easier to get out when you can just take it out by hand and that way you're not screwing anything up like what just happened so 
Um, but. So once you just kind of broke the seal, it'll just pull out. Just like that. And we are apart. So that's your input shaft. Goes the half shaft, brakes, differential, blah, 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 blah. Cool. All right. So that part's done. Or not the fulcrum arm. And then just kind of moved it up out of the way so I've got some wiggle room. So now we'll just be taking those out. There it's off, and then here are the series of shims I was talking about. And you want to keep them in the right order. And so what I do is I just kind of carefully peel them off. I don't bend them. There. Okay, so there's the shims. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape these together for the outside and then on the other side of the rotor there's another one and that's all for this video it's getting a little bit long so I'm gonna save removal of the brakes for the, our next video <laughs>